There are games that bring us joy. There are games that make us scared. There are games that make us excited. And then there are games that make us want to test out our toaster during a bath. They might not be terrible. No, terrible games might be enjoyable for how awful they are. It's the only explanation I have for why people are still playing Fallout 76. Nihilists need something to play too, right? No, some games are just mind-numbingly generic and boring to the point that I hate myself for playing them. This is one such game. So, can you beat Bolt without hating yourself? This challenge would be tricky because my state of self-loathing going into Bolt was hovering around a 4, as is typical. In order to successfully complete this task, it could not rise above a 9. If it did, I would feel like a failure, and that would automatically put me a 10. Sort of a negative feedback loop I inadvertently set up there. Upon realization of my stupid wind conditions, the lothometer instantly rose to 5. I hadn't even loaded up the game, and the very concept had started working against me. For those who are not familiar with Bolt, you may be surprised to know that the game was based on an animated movie by Disney, starring the voice talents of... uh... I don't know... Let's say Lena Dunham and Ben Shapiro. Go ahead and correct me, Internet. I'm not going to bother checking the IMDb page. Doing so would put me at a 6, and I need all the advantages I can get. Let's face it, no one saw this film, probably because of the casting choices. Which is why it might surprise you that it made $310 million- Wait, what? Well, might as well raise that to 6 anyway. This was bad. The things I'm willing to do for the algorithm. Hey look, Internet, I'm playing a game about a dog. You like dogs, right? Don't make my suffering be in vain. Upon loading up the game, I knew this was an uphill battle. Despite never watching the film, I could piece together a general idea of the plot. An obsessed hamster had fixated on the television adventures of a superpowered dog and a girl wielding a magic stick. Don't laugh. Since the game is called Bolt, I imagined the off-brand underdog would be my central character, but I was so very wrong. You see, the game begins with you playing Penny, a girl who pines for the days of stealth action titles, but didn't want to make killing enemies feel too dark. So instead she does goofy tricks to hide the fact that she is actually a murderous psychopath. Disney has effectively made Baby's First Wet Works Op. Luckily, I too yearn for the days of great stealth games. Before stealth was thrown into every game as an option you could sort of pull off before giving up and shooting everyone in sight. This did not make me hate myself any further, and Penny was so effective at dispatching the covert operatives, I could only imagine how amazing Bolt would be. However, things were not all bright and shiny in Toontown. Turns out Bolt was a little less Splinter Cell and a lot more Arkham Asylum. Suddenly, the game transformed into a button-mashing brawler, where I did basically the same attacks over and over again in an endless spiral of going for the jugular and whipping enemies across the room like I was Willow Smith talking about her hair. Before I could get too bored, the game switched things up and offered a boss battle with, uh, quick-time button-mashing. Kill me now. Just kill me now. The chopper went down, Bolt took a valuable lesson from Whiplash about suffering for your art, and our heroes were whisked away to some ancient ruins. Suddenly a depressing question breached my conscious mind. How long is this game? I tried to shove those horrible questions into the back of my brain as I pushed forward, although it had weighed heavily on me, pushing the lothometer to seven. Immediately, I ran into another beat-everyone-up-to-proceed arena and then failed at super-speeding across a chasm. The game then introduced a new enemy type, which I shall call Captain Stupid Pants. The game then helpfully reminded me that Captain Stupid Pants was too fast. Thank you, Captain Obvious Text. I stunned him, bopped him on the head, and he ran home to mommy. This unlocked my supercharged ability, and the slight dopamine rush of advancement gave me a sense of accomplishment that lowered my level back to six. Everything was coming up Millhouse. Another helicopter came to avenge his brother, and I destroyed it by yelling. Having worked in customer service, I was very familiar with this method of getting a refund. Another beat-em-up arena was marred by the return of Captain Stupid Pants, call Elton John, because the bitch is back. To make this even more annoying, he stood on an unreachable platform. A continuous barrage of enemies befell me. As soon as one group went down, another would appear. I could have used the return of Captain Obvious Text, because it felt like the game wanted me to do something very specific. And so, with a heavy heart, I broke down 
and looked at a guide. That's right, I needed to look at a game guide for Bolt. I felt such shame, my level rose back to seven. Hello darkness, my old friend. It turns out I needed to push a couple very specific buttons to shout the platform down. Unconcerned with the destruction of a historical site, the game switched me back to the Teen Titan version of Sam Fisher. Penny's summer vacation in South America was going poorly, and she wanted all the putties to know it. The ease at which she took out the same damn enemies Bolt required supercharged snuggles for was absurd, but it moved the game along faster, so I was cool with it. Just when I felt like banging my head on a table, the game shook things up with a Tron-themed twin-stick shooter, which kept me awake for a few minutes longer. And then it was back to the bolt -em up action, as I tore down what remained of an ancient civilization, because I'm the hero after all. With the Tower of Terror in ruins, Penny came face to face with our main villain, uh... Kevin Snakey. Sure. Generic supervillain number five wanted Penny to know that he would not release her father and her family's pineapple upside down cake recipe would die with him. This could not stand. Things would only get worse as Bolt confronted another new enemy, which I shall call Patty Cakes. I defeated both Patties and received my laser eyes. A dog with laser eyes could never be a bad thing. Unless it's like a Stephen King novel, then it's bad. I briefly fluctuated back to a 6 before realizing the main reason I had laser eyes was to engage in some, uh, light puzzle solving, which led to some, uh, timed platforming challenges. Also, I fell off a cliff, so back to 7 for me. After getting squished by an ancient idol, the Gaming for Dummies text reminded me to hold the right trigger for invulnerability. I successfully destroyed another priceless artifact and merrily went about the rest of my day. Then the game asked me to do another round of punchy, puzzly, timey-wimey crap, leading to another statue-smashing adventure, where I died. No amount of please try again could make my failure any more palatable. We had hit the dreaded eight. After playing an infinite nose punch game with another patty cake, Bolt finished destroying the ancient temple and found Penny. Hooray! Stinky Snake Eye ran for the hills and our heroes were reunited. We could finally leave this terrible place, and I thought we must be at least halfway through this damn thing. This delusion set me back to a comfortable five. But you know what they say about getting comfortable? Don't. The next stage took place on top of a train because someone played Uncharted. It was here I was introduced to a new villain, Discman, and he sucked. His discs could attach to my back, and there wasn't a Taylor Swift song powerful enough to shake them off. I started to wonder why Bolt was not crushing these enemies to a pulp, considering he can pick up a damn tank with his teeth. At last I could tear into Discman and laid down the hard truth that brick and mortar music stores were no longer a viable business in the age of brown box e-commerce. But the truth hurts, and I was back to six. We were now in the frozen wastes, and okay, I had to know how much longer this game was, so ugh, back to the walkthrough I went. I mean, I could be playing Borderlands 3 or Outer Worlds right now, but no, Nathan had a fun idea for a video, so I guess we're stuck playing a generic action platformer movie tie-in. Now I feel sad, so seven it is. It appeared that there were only a few more parts to the game, which felt like too many, but enough that it was manageable. Filled with determination, I trudged onward. This new resolve put me back to six. It had been a roller coaster, but the game finally took a page from Goldeneye and thrust me into a secret government facility in Siberia. Bold received a super bark so he can yell at minions even louder. Somehow I just now figured out that I could throw enemies into objects despite the laws of gravity. Then we were back to Dora the Explorer, but from a Tarantino movie. It was quite impressive how her wheelie stick perfectly fit into so many crevices. Don't laugh! Penny learned the finer points of the jungle gym and wheeled across that damn James Bond jumped off in the movie, remember that? Oh, this minion failed at a trust fall. Then Penny put her advanced platforming stick maneuvers to good use pulling off a Mission Impossible, and then got shocked to death on a power line. This is a valuable lesson, kids. No power ziplining allowed. Penny then encountered a disc man of her own, 
but this one had a uh, attack pattern that made some of his attacks uncounterable, if that's a word. Suddenly, I felt depressed, as I failed multiple times, and it elevated my self-hatred to seven yet again. Both then had a group session of patty cake, and we were off to the turbines. This is where it became more evident of the general principles this game used to increase difficulty. You fought three enemies before? Really? How about ten this time? How close to Dynasty Warriors would you like to get? I failed to get Bolt killed in a turbine, which would mercifully have ended this game early. Feeling at about an eight now, I did a quick stress test on this window by throwing a patty into it. Yeah, still stands up well, good. And now it was time to rescue Penny from the inside of a missile, which is a thing. This combined all my favorite things, like contact-sensitive button pressing, slowly climbing around a cylinder, using my laser eyes like a can opener, playing that Aerosmith song in my head. After reenacting the opening of Saints Row 4, we headed off to the, oh merciful day, last location in the game! Back to a reasonable six on the old shame-o-meter. Wait, what? Oh, we have to trudge through this ship first? Damn it! All right, we'll call it seven for now. Penny took up sniping at this point to knock out enemies to death. I mean, that amount of sedative would have taken down an elephant. No way they're getting up. More hacking minigames, more completely harmless headshots, more kung fu fighting arenas, and suddenly my ground pound got an upgrade that I really didn't need. At this juncture, Bolt decided to take up a new hobby, Eco Warrior. These gas-guzzling Humvees had to be stopped, and Bolt was just the dog to do it. One fought back, but its victory was short-lived. Because repetition is the key to happiness, I ended up back on a train fighting a helicopter. Snaky Jakey got away again, and now we were freaking finally in the last stage of this game. My fervor restored, I knew I had the power to finish this game, and set the clock back to a calm, collected four. My super bark was even louder now, and Bolt reached 24-hour news pundit status. He made some good points. Fleas should be placed on a terror watch list. Apparently so should laser grids, as I triggered a collapsing floor multiple times. We were in the home stretch of this descent into madness, and now, of all times, they decided to whip out the laser alert system trope. Up to five. Wait. It gets worse. Out of nowhere, Bolt loses his powers, and Penny tosses away her stick for reasons. They were depressed. I was depressed. And I was at six. President Business made some speech about how he liked the old She-Ra better than the new She-Ra, blah, blah, blah. Worse yet, the game broke out the very slow move-a-cage-around-a-maze mechanic, which is, ironically, the most innovative thing this game has done so far. And it sucks. Back to seven. I thought I was safe, but the game was going to throw everything it could at me before the end. Even more laser grids befell me. Endlessly failing stealth sections had me shook, and then the game pulled out one more giant middle finger. I had entered another Tron shooter section and wound up in a seemingly endless loop of self-hatred. There were not enough Dr. Phil platitudes to get me through this shame spiral. I almost gave up, teetering between an eight and a nine. But then, I put on my big boy pants, and finished the last hack. Bolt was now constantly supercharged, and it was time to go full Super Saiyan on these jokers. I would not be waylaid by some stupid zap trap. I would not be discouraged by a repetitive artificial game lengthener. It was time to end this. Before continuing though, I looked up motivational quotes to gird my loins for this last push. Hang in there, kitty. You can has all the cheeseburgers. We're going in. The boss battle with snakes on a plane was a bit anticlimactic, as he mostly relied on getting his fix off some magical energy MacGuffins. Every time he reached one of these pylons, he would replenish part of his health, which meant this stretched out longer than it had any right to be. Still, I kind of defeated him before he escaped on a ship, because apparently Penny thought it was more important to stop a barrage of missiles. Ugh, fine, Superdog, let's go full-on quest for peace. I was so close to the end, and yet now I had to play more Aerosmith love ballads in my head, which was a drain on my fragile mental state. It was only now, at the very end, that I realized I could jump around a rocket, which would have been really handy during the last Slim Pickens adventure. 
I was probably up to an 8.5 by this point, as I wondered when I could finally put this game down forever and play, I don't know, Barbie's Horse Adventure, really anything less boring. Worse yet, the game thought it would be super fun to put me on a timer, because hell was not frozen over, but was experiencing a cold snap. And lo, at this darkest of hours, I disabled the last missile and finished Bolt without hating myself. Completely. Alright, so that was a generally unpleasant experience. I wonder what other shenanigans I get up to in the future. Currently, I'm just playing Outer Worlds, which has set this meter down to like three, so that's good. As always, don't forget to dislike and unsubscribe. I would do it myself if that were possible. See you next time when I ask if you can play My Time at Porsche without referencing Stardew Valley. So, I wanted to give Abigail a new chapter, and build her for my player character in Porsche. The answer is no.